everyone, Paige here with Suzy Soapworks and we are back. I'm so sorry that it's been so long since we posted a video. The holiday rush kind of took over us and um, we went on vacation to Peru. got back a few days ago so we are getting right back in it and are going to film a bath bomb video for you guys so we're gonna be making a valentine's day bath bomb um i got these molds right here from a shop on etsy i'll link that shop down below um but we have this spite me mold super cute um i had to get a harry potter wizard house like Hi. I'm super excited about I might do like sorting house bath bombs with that one. I got this cute love letter. They're pretty big too. Like it's a good size bath bomb. Um, I got this one for Easter. This is like a cracking like chick. Super cute. And then this adorable little gnome with a heart. And then I had to get this one too. The bloody hell. Bloody hell. From Harry Potter or oh bloody hell it says yeah so I think today we are going to keep it simple I'll probably film a video with the gnome one too or let me know down below which mold you want to see made but today I think we're gonna do the bite me one just because it's gonna be a lot less painting after the bath bomb has hardened so yeah today we'll do that one and then yeah again let me know in the comments if you want to see any of these other molds that I bought made and again I'll leave the link down in the description box below for you to shop these molds. All right let's get started. <laughs> So I made these by mixing 10 ounces of baking soda. This one's a lot more wet than this one. 10 ounces of baking soda with a quarter teaspoon of the bath bomb dye and I used the one from Nurture Soap. This one's yellow but I used the orange one in this one and then I used the red 28 pink one in this one. Um, so I mixed 10 ounces of baking soda and I sift that. Then I put a little like splash of water. I put a little too much water in this one, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal, which is why this one's so wet, but I do like the tiniest splash. And then I put the quarter teaspoon of the dye in here. And then I put seven ounces of citric acid in here after I mix the dye and the water and the baking soda together. And I just put this in the middle of like the bath bomb as I'm making it. All right. So let's get ahead to our mix. So if you've seen my last bath bomb video, I have a lot of people mentioned that they thought the mix was gonna be too dry. Um, I live in Minnesota, so during the summer, that's usually like the recipe that I use and it's not dry for me but for these kind of molds I've always read that you're supposed to use a, a more wet mixture and so I for this recipe I add a little more rubbing alcohol and oil and a little bit more polysorbate 80 to make the mixture more wet it just sticks better and on molds better out of these molds I don't know why but um yeah so this is gonna be a little bit of a different recipe so if you've tried the other recipe from the margarita bath bombs and that one was too dry for you. You can try this recipe. This one should be more wet than that one. Um, but again, like if your recipe is ever more dry, just take rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and just mist your mix until it's more wet. Um, sometimes I actually have to do that as I'm molding because sometimes my mix will dry up really fast as I'm molding and I'll give it a spritz and keep molding. And it works really good. All right, so I weigh my recipe in grams. So I'm gonna change my scale to grams. And then I have my sifter here and I'm gonna tear my scale. And then for this recipe, I use 1000 grams of baking soda. There we go. All right, and we're just gonna sift this. Now I'm going to tear my scale again and we need 40 grams of SLSA. 
As I'll say, it's not necessary to add. You could just replace it with either the ba more baking soda or more cornstarch. Um, but it does help the bath bomb foam, not just bubble, but it like foams and creates like a bunch of foam and it's really pretty um, and it kind of adds to that luxurious experience. So I'm going to add 40 grams of this. And then I always add 10 grams of kaolin clay. And 75 grams of cornstarch. Um, because these powders can go airborne, I highly recommend wearing um, a mask. I have an N95 mask right here. Um, it's really not good to inhale this, especially the SLSA. So I'm just gonna sift these together really slowly so these powders don't pop up at me. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna give this like a gentle mix, just to mix in those ingredients with the baking soda. All right. So now I'm gonna add 30 grams of rubbing alcohol. And then I'm gonna add 15 grams of distilled water. And today I am using the Love Spell Fragrance Oil from Midwest Fragrance Co. I used to use the Love Spell Fragrance from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, this one smells actually more like the Love Spell Fragrance from that really popular lingerie store. Um, so I actually put 14 grams of this. I did make a video um, on my top fragrance oil suppliers, but that was before I discovered Mid Midwest Fragrance Company. I actually am buying like the majority of my oils from them because they are so affordable and they ship very fast. Like they usually ship next day. So I've been ordering most of my stuff from them. They're pretty new still. So they're still coming out with quite a bit of um, new oils. But yeah, go give them a follow on their Facebook page and you get so many tips and tricks for product formulating, um, people asking questions about their products, about the oils, like it's such a good community. All right, so I have polysorbate 80 here. I'm gonna add 10 grams of this. And my oil, I'm gonna add 12 grams. Or sorry, 15 grams, my bad. All right, so 15 grams of the oil. Now I'm gonna give this a big mix. All right, so for my base color, I'm just gonna use this little mold, silicone mold, to mix my water and my color. And I'm just gonna do about three grams of water. Just because I don't want to add too much more water into this. And a fourth of a teaspoon of the yellow dye. And this is also from Nurture Soap. Sometimes it's easier to have warm or hot water. It helps to activate the dye. Um, and get it all mixed in. All right, so I'm just gonna pour this in here. mix this up by like rubbing it in my hands. It kind of breaks up the clumps of liquid. All right, so I'm gonna keep mixing this up until it's nice and smooth and everything's incorporated and we'll be right back. All right, so that's pretty well incorporated. Now it's time for our citric acid. So I get my citric acid, it's in this bag right here from Amazon. It is the only place that I can find affordable citric acid. So if you have any recommendations of where to buy citric acid at a really good price, please let me know. Um, this is a 10 pound bag and I think this is like $36 on Amazon with free shipping if you have Prime. Um, but yeah, please let me know if you have any other ideas or suppliers that you know sell citric acid cheaper. All right, so I use 500 grams of citric acid. Incorporate this. Get rid of the scale now. We're all done with that. All 
I do use my stand mixer sometimes to incorporate all these ingredients. It definitely goes by faster, but sometimes the liquid doesn't like break up all the way. So like there'll be like little like balls of liquid in here. Um, so that's why I like to do it with my hands. If I make bigger batches, then I usually use the stand mixer. And if I make colored batches, I usually do this with my hands. If the whole batch is just gonna be white and uncolored and I end up painting it, then I'll use the stand mixer. All right, so I have my parchment paper here and my molds and my powders are right here. So those will be, I'm gonna actually put these on the side. Um, you're not gonna be able to see them, but you'll see when I come in. All right, so first, a good trick with these molds is to pack all the details first. Um, so I usually only put a little bit in at a time and I've actually never used molds from this company before. So this is the first time I'm trying them out. I'm sure they'll be amazing. So I just make sure I pack all of the details really good first. And I kind of like push the batter like up in the mix up the sides because when I put my embed powder in there, I don't want it to be seen. Um, so that kind of makes sure it stays, make sure it stays in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna put the orange in. Just gonna drop it in like that and then pink. I kind of tap that down and then I'm just gonna cover that up. All right, sorry guys, my camera died. Um, so I'm gonna quickly pack this again. Um, the mold works great, by the way. Put the embed powder in. I like to smooth it out after, and then I kind of smack it down, and I like tap it, and then I'll wiggle it out. There we go. So cute. This bath bomb mix is the perfect consistency for these type of molds. Um, in order to make sure your bath bomb mix is wet enough, you just squeeze it and then drop it. And if it still is formed, it's perfect. I'm just pushing it down on the table. Make sure it's at a flat surface. Surface, it keeps kind of cracking in the middle. And then smack it down. These are pretty big bath bombs. There we go. And after I mold these, I'm gonna let these sit overnight to dry, and then I'll bring you back in the morning to paint them. I love painting the bath bombs. I actually bought an airbrush machine for these Grinch bath bombs. Well, for coloring or for painting bath bombs, but I bought it when I wanted to paint these Grinch bath bombs and it helped so much. This batch made 10 of these bath bombs. Um, I will be using one for a demo that I'll show you at the end, but stay tuned for tomorrow and we'll start painting them. Hello everyone, so we are back the next day. Um, these bath bombs have hardened up beautifully, so they are ready to paint. This is what they look like before being painted. Super cute. Um, I haven't really decided sure what colors I want. Um, I have pink mica, purple mica, and then some black oxide right here and I'm gonna mix these with some rubbing alcohol. So I'm gonna do one and then we'll see if I like it or not. The one that I do will be my test one um, for the demonstration later on. But yeah, so I'm just gonna add some rubbing alcohol to these to kind of make like a paint. So that's enough. I'm using a really thin 
thin brush for the black because that's what I'm gonna do to outline the, or not outline, but to um, paint the, the words. And then I'll mix the pink, perfect. And then the purple. So I've kind of wanted to like make that outline on the edge of the heart, the purple. And then I wanted to do like a background color on the letters pink and then do a smaller outline of black on the letters. We'll see how it looks. I'm just gonna be painting the rim. And these are just like watercolor brushes. You can really use any paintbrush you want. I just wanted some really thin, fine um, brushes and I found the watercolor ones worked the best especially since this consistency is more close to a watercolor consistency. and I kind of like this effect. It's kind of hard to see, but I first painted the bite mark purple, like half purple and half pink, and then I went over it with black, and it has like this cool like iridescent effect. It's really hard to get on camera. So you can see like the pink underneath, and then let me try to flip it. And then you can kind of see the purple, so I think I'm gonna do that. I kind of like how that looks. Um, and then I'm just gonna stick with the purple around the edge, no gold. All right, we have it figured out. Hopefully you guys like this. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna cycle through painting these. Um, I'll play some music. I'm not gonna talk during this time since I have everything ready, so enjoy watching. Super cute, I love them. Here we go. All right, let's go do a demonstration. All right, so we are in our bathroom. So here's the bath bomb in a different light. Here's like the iridescent, kind of like a color shifting, like dark, like maybe holographic. It's really pretty. All right. shoot out from the middle but until then enjoy this bathroom demo changed the painting design again and I'm going to show you how I do it. 
So here is what I planned on doing. So I'm gonna do stripes on this side. I think that looks super cute. And it definitely makes the bite mark more noticeable and tie in more. So I'm gonna do that. So I'll show you how I do it. So I have my mega paints here just like before. And I have this bigger like flat head brush. And I'm going to load it up with some purple. And I'm going to just paint one stripe with it. And I'm going to do that all the way around and leave a space for the pink. It goes by pretty quick. It's just a cute extra little touch. Kind of makes it look like a little gift box. And then I'm just gonna clean off my brush with some more rubbing alcohol. And now I'm gonna grab some pink. Just go in those spots. It's running a little bit, a little too much on my brush. All right, just like that. So that is how I made these Bite Me Bath Bombs. Again, if you saw one of the molds that I have that you wanna see, me make just leave a comment down below which one and i'll make a video on that um thank you so much for watching if you liked this video give a thumbs up subscribe down below leave a comment if you have any questions and yeah um if you want to order these bath bombs they will be on the site and i'll leave that link down below all right thanks everyone bye